Our topic of discussion today is National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes. Introduction The Constitution of India contains specific provisions relating to protection of rights and welfare of minorities, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other disadvantaged section. The Union Government in this regard, by law, constituted several commissions to look after the implementation of special safeguards and welfare measures for these categories of people. Since independence, Union Government has provided a variety of benefits, protections and programs for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, including reservation of seats in legislature, places in educational institutions and posts in government departments. The constitutional basis for establishment of the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes are found in the Articles 338, 339 and 341 and 342 of the Constitution. Under Article 338, President is mandated to appoint a special officer to investigate and report on the working of the safeguards provided in the Constitution for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes. Article 339 says that President may at any time at the expiry of 10 years from the commencement of the Constitution shall appoint a commission for the welfare of the Scheduled Tribes. It is crucial to mention that there is no definition of Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes in the Constitution. It only says under Article 342 that President is empowered to draw off a list in consultation with the Governor of its state subject to revision of such lists by Parliament. Evolution of the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes Originally, Article 338 of the Constitution provided for the appointment of a special officer for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to investigate all matters relating to the constitutional safeguards for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and reports to the President on their working. In 1978, the Government of India, through a resolution, set off a non-statutory multi-member commission for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. The officer of commissioner for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes also continued to exist. In 1987, the government through another resolution modified the function of the commission and renamed it the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes. Later, the 65th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1990 provided for the establishment of a high-level multi-member National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes in the place of a single special officer for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes and the Commission set off under the resolution of 1987. Again, the 89 Constitutional Amendment Act of 2003 bifurcated the Combined National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes into two separate bodies, namely National Commission for Scheduled Castes under Article 338 and the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes under Article 338A. The separate National Commission for Scheduled Castes came into being in 2004. It consists of a chairperson, a vice chairperson and three other members. They are appointed by the president by warrants under his hand and seal. Their condition of service and tenure of office are also determined by the president. Functions of the Commission The functions of the Commission are to investigate and monitor all matters relating to the constitutional 
and other legal safeguards for the scheduled cast and to evaluate their working. To inquire into specific complaints with respect to the deprivation of rights and safeguard of the scheduled cast. To participate and advise on the planning process of socio-economic development of the scheduled cast and evaluate the progress of their development under the union or state. To present to the President annually and at such other times as may deem fit reports upon the working of those safeguards. To make recommendations as to the measures that should be taken by the Union or a state for the effective implementation of those safeguards and other measures for the protection, welfare and socio-economic development of scheduled cause. And to discharge such other functions in relation to the protection, welfare and development and advancement of the scheduled cause as the President may specify. Report of the Commission The Commission presents an annual report to the President. It can also submit a report as and when it thinks necessary. The President places all such reports before the Parliament along with a memorandum explaining the action taken on the recommendation made by the Commission. The memorandum should also contain the reasons for the non-acceptance of any such recommendation. The President also forwards any report of the Commission pertaining to a state government to the state governor. The governor places it before the state legislature along with a memorandum that should explain the action taken on the recommendations of the Commission. The memorandum should also contain the reasons for the non-acceptance of any such recommendations. Powers of the Commission The Commission is vested with the power to regulate its own procedures. The Commission, while investigating any matter or inquiring into any complaint, has all the power of a civil court trying a suit and in particular in respect of the following matters. Summoning and enforcing the attendance of any person from any part of India and examining him on oath. Requiring the discovery and production of any document. Receiving evidence on affidavits. Requisitioning any public record from any court or office. Issuing summons for the examination of witnesses and documents. And any other matter which the President may determine. The central government and the state government are required to consult the Commission on all major policy matters affecting the scheduled cause. The Commission is also required to discharge similar functions with regards to other backward classes, that is OVCs, and the Anglo-Indian community as it does with respect to the scheduled cause. In other words, the Commission has to investigate all matters relating to the constitutional and other legal safeguards for the OVCs, that is, other vagrant classes, and the Anglo Indian community, and report to the President upon their working. National Commission for Scheduled Tribes Like the National Commission for Scheduled Castes, the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes is also a constitutional body in the sense that it is directly established by Article 338. A of the Indian Constitution, it's inserted by the Constitution 89 Amendment. The separate National Commission for Scheduled Tribes came into existence in 2004, consequent upon the passing of 89th Constitutional Amendment Act 2003. Composition of the Commission The National Commission for Scheduled Tribes is a multi-member constitutional body. It consists of a chairperson, a vice chairperson and three other members. They are appointed by the president by Warren under his hand and seal. 
functions of the commission constitution of india under article 338a has assigned the following duties and functions to the commission to investigate and monitor all matters relating to the safeguards provided for the scheduled tribes under the constitution or under any law for the time being in force or under any order of the government and to evaluate the working of such safeguards to inquire into specific complaints with respect to the deprivation of rights and safeguards of the scheduled tribes to participate and advise in the planning process of socio-economic development of the scheduled tribes and to evaluate the progress of their development under the union and any state to present to the president annually and at such other times as the commission may deem fit reports upon the working of those safeguards to make in such reports recommendations as to the measures that should be taken by the union or any state for effective implementation of those safeguards and other measures for the protection welfare and socio-economic development of the scheduled tribes and to discharge such other functions in relation to the protection welfare and development and advancement of the scheduled tribes as the president may subject to the provision of any law made by parliament by rule specify powers of the commission for scheduled tribes while investigating the matters referred to in sub clause a to inquire into any complaint referred to in sub clause b of clause 5 the commission have all the powers of a civil court trying a suit and in particular in respect of the following matters summoning and enforcing the attendance of any persons from any part of India and examining him on oath, requiring the discovery and production of any documents, receiving evidence on affidavits, requisitioning any public record or copy thereof from any court or office, issuing summons, communications for the examination of witnesses and documents any other matter which the president may by rule determine in accordance with clause 9 of article 338a of the constitution union and every state government shall consult the commission on all major policy matters affecting scheduled tribes conclusions so far we have discussed about the powers and composition of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and we know that before the 89 constitutional amendment there was a combined uh, commission for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes but the 89 constitutional amendment have bifurcated the combined national commission for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes into two commission that is one for scheduled castes and one for scheduled tribes and now the scheduled caste commission is working for the promotion and protection of the rights guaranteed for the scheduled caste in the constitution and the national commission for scheduled tribe is working for the promotion and protection of the rights guaranteed under the constitution for scheduled tribes and in conclusions what we can say is that the national commission for scheduled caste and the National Commission for Scheduled Tribes are constitutional commissions established under Article 338 and 338A. Prior to the passing of Constitution 89 Amendment Act 2003, there was a combined commission for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. A separate national commission, it's for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, were established in order to safeguard the interests of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes more effectively. Both the commissions are multi-member body with specific mandate to monitor and investigate the implementation of safeguards provided in the constitution and other laws for
for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. The constitutional basis for establishment of the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes are found in the Article 338, 339, and 341, 342 of the Constitutions. As we know that Constitution of India contains several provisions relating to the protection and promotion of rights of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Therefore, in order to effectively and adequately promote the right of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, we need to strengthen the National Commission for Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes in a more efficient and effective way. Thank you very much.